What do you like when you get held up in traffic? What about people who don't do what you want them to do? Or they do it, but they do it late, or they do it slowly, or they do it wrong. As we start to get back to normal, how do you react to the people who aren't acting as you think they should in the supermarket, in the street? How are you when you don't get your own way? Do you sulk or do you explode? Today I want to start a series of four thoughts that remind us of what God is like and by remembering those four things, it can change the way that we live. And the first thought is this, God is great, so we don't have to be in charge. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones uh, once wrote this, he said, have you realized that most of your unhappiness is due to the fact that you're listening to yourself instead of talking to yourself? Well, lockdown's been going a long time and you might be fearing for my sanity at the moment because obviously talking to yourself, first sign of madness, right? Well, it all depends on what you're telling yourself, I think. We all need to become better preachers. Some of my congregation are shouting our men at this point. By which I mean we need to preach to our hearts, our own hearts, and remind ourselves of what we read in the Bible. And we need to really chew those things over from Scripture and make them part of us. And if we talk to ourselves using the words of God, then far from being the first sign of madness, it's a sign, in fact, of great wisdom. So, for instance, if we were to read the Gospel of Mark, his account of the life of Jesus, we'd remember that Jesus calms a storm when his disciples are terrified, including some really experienced fishermen in that group. You'd remember that he has restored a man who was completely out of his mind and thought to be demon-possessed. He heals a woman who is sick and has been sick for a long, long time. And he raises a dead girl back to life. So Jesus shows us that he's in control over everything, over nature, over demons, over sickness, even in control over death. So if Jesus has the kind of power to still a raging sea, to overcome evil, to cure a long-term medical problem, and even to cancel a funeral, who's in control here? Clearly Jesus. And Jesus is God in the flesh, in human form, walking the earth. We see Jesus, we see what God is like. The great news is no one died and left you or me in charge. Thank goodness, hey? God is great and God knows best. If things don't go the way that I think they should, then I need to consider that maybe, just maybe, God knows better than I do. In difficult situations, I need to remember that God is in control and if necessary, give myself a good talking to. Even if he doesn't answer my prayers in the way that I think he should, am I still gonna trust him as being in control or will I instead fret and worry? In Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 25, Jesus tells his followers this. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you can't do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown onto the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? Don't set your hearts on what you'll eat or drink. Don't worry about it. And here's the kicker. For the pagan runs after all such things. And your father 
knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. Now if we're Christians and followers of Jesus we know this to be true. But worrying if anything will lead us to an early grave because of all the stress and everything that's related which is bad for our health. It's foolish to worry. Doubly so if we know that we have a Heavenly Father though who knows what we need and who wants to look after his children. So the challenge to us as followers of Jesus here is are we living as pagans? In other words children who don't know who God is? Or are we remembering that we have a Father who cares for us and is in control and so we don't need to worry. And by the way, I think that's the emphasis of this commandment here. Instead of saying, thou shalt not worry, it's the grace of the gospel. It's God in his goodness coming to us and saying, you don't need to worry. You have a father who is very great and knows exactly what you need and when you need it. I don't know about you, but I know that in my head, but it doesn't always get into my heart. I forget those things sometimes when I'm faced with a different situation, a difficult situation. So we really need to take this truth that God is great, much greater than our circumstances. And we need to take that really deep into ourselves and bury it deep in our hearts. So next time you're tempted to worry, have a word with yourself. It's not a sign of madness, it's wisdom.